All right, greetings. Welcome back to another episode of Black Bear News, where everything is connected and the viewers are smarter than the average bear. And this is uh, another upload for you. Uh, just bringing you news of the day, obviously, in Florida and elsewhere. They're preparing for the landing of Helene. Helene, Helene, uh, will be a major impact well inland, according to this report, Noah Bergman, or Bergren, uh, Georgia, the Western Carolinas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. This is actually a rare meteorological setup for this side of the world. This is called the Fujiwara effect. Notice how major Hurricane Hel Helene gets boomeranged northwest and around a low pressure aloft, aloft over West Tennessee. This is like two planets orbiting each other uh, other than consolidating into one. Just making sure that my sound is okay. I think so. The complicated and uncommon meteorological process will help keep the forward speed of the remnants very high. Destructive wind gusts throughout central Georgia, Atlanta area, and East Tennessee. Um, okay, and just quickly, this is rare, but also not that rare. Not these days. Um, and we see this, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why they can't point this out. Um or I don't know why meteorologists can't don't have any historical memory banks. Um, this seems to happen a lot these days where storms linger. Um, and, and this is what they're doing now when they're supposed to be dissipating. They seem to linger and go all the way across the continent and hit and, you know, reanimate. I guess we could call them zombie storms, but this is a regular occurrence, and maybe this is part of the part of the fusion, you know, sowing confusion around climate change, because you know they treat every heat wave and every weather event as a singular entity, and they might mention climate change, and they might say, well, the warmer waters contribute, and they might mention, well, they're going to be stronger because of climate change, but they can't really give you the full impact of what is going on on the planet. Um, right. They're all, you know, when they talk about heat waves, it's, Oh, this, you know, this is a crazy heat wave. <clears throat> and it'll be over soon, <laughs> but one day they'll just never end. Um, well, let's keep going with, uh, st some reports suggest parts of Florida may see storm surge up to 20 feet. Of course, you know, is it going to happen? <clears throat> this is a worst case scenario. Probably won't happen, but do you want to take a chance? Is going to bring one to three feet of inundation across many locations. That certainly is enough to knock you off your feet. It can definitely stall cars out and even carry cars away and certainly flood many of the lower levels of structures. But we know Florence is also going to bring water rises well above that, perhaps up to six feet. Now, six feet of water, imagine that. That carries large objects in it, like cars, for example, that can act like battering rams and enhance the damage that would otherwise be. And also, we know that can flood the lower levels of many structures. We also know that Florence is going to carry with it likely storm surge well above that, perhaps nine, ten feet, maybe more. That will totally cover up one-story buildings and structures, leaving them underwater, and certainly pose a risk to many. There are very few places that are safe when the water rises this high. So please, follow the advice of your local officials and heed the evacuation warnings, and of course, stay updated on all the latest forecasts. Yeah, <clears throat> well, we'll see who heeds. People famously <clears throat> hunker down and don't believe the forecasts. Um, but this is probably a bad time to not 
not heed the forecast. And, and, you know, again, if you're just kind of a student of life, if you're paying attention, if you are, you know, breathing air in and out of your lungs every day, thousand year, 500 year floods are happening all over the planet. Well, and you realize that things are getting worse. The floods are getting worse. The damage is getting worse. The hurricanes are getting worse. The storm surge is getting worse. Well, maybe you put all that together and you form a picture of like, well, maybe I should not play with this one. Uh, Hurricane Helene forecast to be most powerful storm to hit us in a year. Storm forecasted to hit Florida's Gulf Coast on Thursday. That's today. It's 40 million people under severe weather warnings. Uh, it's supposed to hit later today, or that's probably very soon. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you're in the area, if you know people in the area, Storm could build to a Category 3 hurricane as it roars across the Gulf. It threatens the entire West Florida coast and Big Bend area. <clears throat> Helene is expected to have a bigger high wind expanse than 90% of other major hurricanes, with its wind field and rain bands expected to stretch more than 140 miles. Uh, so, <clears throat> looking quite huge. <clears throat> also, Hitting, also getting a touch in Mexico and Central America there. <clears throat> uh, speaking of countries that flooded in the last week, uh, Obsolete Optics sent me this. By the way, guys, uh, please follow me on Twitter. Golly G. Willikers. I'm sharing lots of news stories on Twitter pretty much every day. And people share news stories with me on Twitter every day. There's, there's my Twitter handle. If you're not in the Black Bear News chat, get in the Black Bear News chat. It's the Y99 link. It says Black Bear News chat, browser chat. It's in the description box below if you want to chat. Send me articles. Um, talk about things and such. Updated list of countries flooded in the last week. In Europe, Poland, France, Austria, Czech Republic, Italy, Spain, Hungary, England, and Wales, Croatia, Greece, Turkey. Other countries, Japan, China, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Nigeria. <clears throat> and that seems like every week. China is on that list every week. Nigeria is on that list every week. Sudan is on that list every week. And uh, if I'm not incorrect, I think Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> All right, let's look at some other news. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams of New York City is indicted on five federal public corruption charges, including bribery, bribery, or bribery and wire fraud. Good Lord. I know, I know, the Democrats are supposed to be the good people. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, wasn't it Kathy Hochul's aide was found guilty of b acting as a foreign agent? Bob Menendez, these are Democrats. I'm not saying Republicans are doing shady stuff too. I'm just saying they're politicians. It doesn't matter whether they wear the red or the blue. They're doing, they're doing this stuff. Uh, man, but that's... It's kind of insane. Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted on five federal charges related to bribery, wire fraud, conspiracy, and soliciting campaign contributions from foreign nationals, according to a 57-page indictment. The indictment alleges illegal action stretching back to 2014 when he was a Brooklyn Borough president. <laughs> well, we know how we, how we get to the tip. Uh, he had friends in high places, I guess but not high enough, apparently. No, thank you. For nearly a decade, Adam sought and accepted improper valuable be benefits, such as luxury international travel, including from wealthy foreign business people and at least one Turkish government official seeking to gain influence over him. 
Remember when uh, I, this stuff is happening all the time? I mean, just you know, when somebody is telling you like somebody else is the most corrupt and the most oh my god, you know, and right or left, right or left, right or left, the most corrupt, the most t- horrible, you know. I mean, they're basically this is projection. They're just talking about themselves, right? Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, interesting. And this happening under a democratic administration. So it must be bad, I guess. Um, this also reminds me, remember when like, was it Nancy Pelosi had a a driver who was a Chinese agent? Is it Nancy Pelosi or Dianne Feinstein? I can't remember which one. Anyways, I kind of feel like, was he really an agent or was he a handler, right? Like a lot of Congress people, senators, people like that have handler, like APAC handlers, right? Um, and so these, all these politicians that are, the, that are engaging in inappropriate, fo- you know, inappropriately representing foreign interests you know in exchange for money right these are these are not agents that happen to be hanging around with them or working for them no they're they're handlers i'm sure um okay in news that's well this has really pretty big implications because this is a conspiracy theory the EPA ordered to address risks of fluoride in water linked to children's IQ. Uh, a few channels have been covering this, and I just wanted to cover it as well. Fluoride has long been a thing that people bring up that say, you know, they're putting fluoride in the water to dumb us down. Well, guess what they, guess what they found out? The fluoride dumbs people down, harms children, harms children's brains, etc. And it took years and years and years and you know one particular lawsuit that went on for eight years for a judge to finally go oh yeah you know what it is bad for you so this is a you know put another put another mark on the conspiracy theory side yep (laughs) that's correct and uh, honestly honestly this has implications to me this you know i'm not this is not a stretch sorry uh, if you think so, it has implications for vaccine safety to me or safety of any drug, right? Because that's a thing that has been, you know, widely criticized as a wackadoo tinfoil thing, but you, but more and more, uh, the former FDA director, uh, Rob, Rob Ren- Renfield just came out I find that story too. Just came out and said RFK, everything RFK is saying was true. Don't I, and the reason why I say this is because don't be surprised if not too long from now they go, Oh yeah. 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 Vaccine safety should be called into question. Right. But there was a whole lot of demonizing of anybody who brought that up for a long time, but now it's kind of starting to become, Anyways, I don't want to get too far off the track, but fluoride, we're talking about fluoride in the water, which people have said for a long time, you know, back in the day, back when I was a kid, this was like a, they're putting fluoride in the water, man, right? It was a, it was a conspiracy theory. (laughs) And now it's true. 20, 30 years later, it's true. EPA ordered to address risks of fluoride and water linked to children's IQ. Edward Chin, a U.S. district judge in San Francisco, California, said on Tuesday that although it is unclear if the amount of fluoride typically added to water is causing lower IQ uh, levels in kids, there is increasing research that it could be an unreasonable risk. Chen ruled the EPA must take steps to lower that potential risk, but did not clarify what the process would look like. In August... <clears throat> 
National Toxicology Program, part of the Department of Health and Human Services, released a report that stated with moderate confidence that there is a connection between higher levels of fluoride exposure and lower IQ in kids. The report, report marks the first time a federal agency has determined such findings. Wow. This is, this is pretty major. This is a pretty major finding. Um, pretty major finding and we'll see, you know, where this goes. Um, maybe his name was not Renfield. I'm thinking, what's his name? Oh, darn it. I had it somewhere. Uh, can I find it? Not if everything freezes up on me. Well, don't know if I'm going to find this fast enough to make it. Is it Redfield? Here we go. Robert Redfield, not Renfield, Robert Redfield. Former CDC director Robert Redfield endorses Donald Trump. Okay, well, you know, whatever. There's a big, you know, push to say that Donald Trump is going to, you know, clean up our health with the aid of RFK. Yeah. You know, it sounds good. I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. He Robert Redfield admits that RFK Jr. got everything right. I don't know about the whole endorsing Trump thing, but. Anyways, Redfield said he had chosen exactly the person who can do this, Robert F. Kennedy. This was breathtaking to me, said RFK, because this is the guy who's the head of the CDC that I've been criticizing for years. Head of the CDC, not FDA, sorry. And then this afternoon he came over and had lunch with me. And the first thing he said to me is, you got everything right. Huh. And there's there's a lot, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of information coming out around vaccines, vaccine safety. Okay, lastly, um, in Detroit, they laid off a bunch of auto workers. This is not a good sign, not a good sign for the economy. Not a good sign for the economy. And they just reached an agreement, right? The UAW and Stellantis, <clears throat> which is kind of like a parent company. Um, for the automakers, uh, they reached an agreement like last year. And then now Stellantis decided to just lay off a bunch of indefinitely lay off full-time workers. The automaker automaker says the action occurs across its manufacturing footprint in the United States. It also said it's cutting, cutting seasonal supplement supplemental employees effective October 1st. The automaker released a statement saying seasonal supplemental employees hired to support Production by covering for increased vacation usage during the summer months will be separated from the company, effective August October 1st. Uh, Stellantis said in a statement about the indefinite layoff of full-time employees, how many did they lay off? trying to find the number um, the UAW responded to the layoffs calling it another slap in the face this shows the company having that the company having a heart or any respect is out of the window said UAW local 1700 leadership in a statement it's just business a business decision for them one robocall to fire 177 people for no wrongdoing of their own 
On Monday, UAW President Sean Fain pushed back against Stellantis, saying they were not holding up their end of the deal with the contract they signed last year. Uh, I can't seem to find the number of the number of people laid off. Can we find this? I don't know. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Guys, if you enjoy this programming coming to you Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends for free, free, free 99. uh, And you want to support the show. um, There are lots of ways to do it in the description box links to direct donation platforms, which are way better for me than tipping on Rockfin or YouTube or Rumble or wherever. All this video will be on Rockfin, Rumble and YouTube. Um, the UAW union filed unfair labor charges against Delantis. Um, as I was saying, if you want to support the show, um, there are lots of ways to do it to those that support the show already. I appreciate you. Um, it looks like, oh, so what they're saying is, uh, 200. So it was 177. That that was the number. 177 supplemental employees. Apparently there's going to be more. November layoffs at GM's Fairfax facility, et cetera. So, um, and they laid off 5,000 workers last year. Hard to get those good union jobs anymore. Stellantis lays off 191 employees. Okay. So that's the number 191 employees at their Sterling Heights plant. Um, All right, guys, that does it for me today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Again, follow me on Twitter. Go to the chat um, for some more conversations about what is going on on the planet. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow at 11 a.m., the usual time tomorrow is Friday. Hope you enjoy your Thursday. And until next time, peace. <laughs>